I will die on this hill, okay? I will die. Hey guys, what's up? It's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I was not going to do this video, but here we are. So, at the very beginning of this year of 2022, I read Credence. I did a review on it. It's one of the first videos I did for this channel because I had a lot to say because I loved it so much and it's a very controversial book. A lot of people don't like it and I can see why I do, but I wanted to reread it again to kind of wrap up 2022 because it was one of my favorite books after rereading i think that this book is actually going to take the number one spot for this year but after rereading it i have a lot of things that i need to say and so this is going to be another review but it's a spoiler review it's a review where you're rereading it so you're going in with a different set of eyes where you can see things from a different angle because you know how things are going to turn out so you can kind of look for certain things. So that's kind of going to be this. So I won't ramble on too much, but I do, like I said, have a lot to say because I'm going to defend this book until my last dying breath, okay? This is a hill that I will die on. Prior to rereading this, I knew that I did want to reread it at some point this year and with it being christmas i have just kind of been in a slump and i don't like christmas romances at all they're just not my vibes and so i decided to read this on christmas eve and i'm glad i did and with being able to annotate it this time around like i said i was able to look at it from an angle of obviously i know how the story ends so i was really able to highlight and underline those important things because what ended up happening was I made it about a quarter of the way through this and then I went on Goodreads and I went back and looked at some reviews because I, I've already seen the bad reviews on this book, a lot of them coming from my friends. And so I was looking at them again and some of the reviews were from people that really actually did like the book. They rated it like a four or a four and a half out of five stars, but what kept them from having a perfect five star was who Tiernan ends up picking and okay this is a spoiler review obviously because I did reread this and I'm defending why this is a five star but people didn't think that Caleb's development was as good as Jake and Noah and yes you could argue that but I think what you have to look at here is that Caleb was a selective mute, meaning that he did not speak. He did eventually talk in like the very last chapter of the book when he's trying to get Tiernan back. But up until then, he hadn't spoken until like since he was four years old. And so she couldn't obviously have these conversations and these hangouts that she could with Jake and Noah. Caleb was a very closed off character. In fact, he was like Tiernan in that sense. And she describes that in the book a few times that they are similar in the sense that they don't like to be around people, that nobody can love them in the way that they need to be loved. And I think that right there also shows how she ended up with him. Now, the first big thing I want to tackle on, and I did tackle on this in my original review that I did towards the beginning of this year, back when I originally read that. And it was that in, I think, towards the middle of the book, Tiernan explains to the three guys that her mother taught her this rule of intimacy growing up, that she needs to be with three guys before she settles down with the one. And the first guy is lust. Like you're just totally into your feelings and you just want passion and all of that. And then the second guy is learning because the first guy basically taught you everything. And with the second guy, you get to be selfish and do what you want to do and take over and make your choices. And then the third guy is how you are finally ready to just settle down and love and be with that one. So it's lust, learn, and love. And that right there basically means each guy is that. So you have Jake, which is the lust, and you can totally tell in the chapter that Tiernan loses it to Jake. It's in Jake's POV, but it's just nothing but lust and passion. And then they do hook up a few more times. And like I said, it's just nothing but 
I want this, I want this, oh my gosh, uh, I, I just, I want to feel things, right? Well, then you get to a point where she's really connecting with Noah and she's thinking, you know, Noah is the person that I need to be with because Noah makes sense. Noah is young, but he talks to me. And so with Noah, she was selfish. She got to be the boss. And obviously that was the case because I will say poor Noah, you know, his time with Tiernan was just a threesome where he had to share her with Caleb, but that's just kind of how the story goes. And then obviously Caleb was our love guy and it was very, very evident early on that Caleb was going to be this one. The first time that Tiernan meets Caleb, is also a pretty controversial moment as it is it's basically Caleb pounces on to Tiernan they had never met he sees her in the garage after he comes back hunting and he basically just attacks her and starts getting on with her well she does shout no and also in her mind she's very turned on by it well, Noah ends up coming in and, you know, pulls him off and basically explains that Tiernan is not a townie because, obviously, I guess it's okay to do that with the townies, which it's not. So, he explains, no, this is Tiernan. She lives with us now. That's not okay. Basically, the last sentence of this chapter is Tiernan says, I'm lost in thought about where that would have gone if Noah hadn't come in, if I hadn't forced myself to push his brother away, and how much of it might not have been Caleb's fault. And that right there is her first attraction to Caleb, and it's the very moment that she meets him. And that's very important because the rest of this book is the tension of how afraid she is of him because she has the most feelings for him. Then you have the very subtle things that Caleb does for Tiernan throughout the story that are just like little tiny gestures that prove that he's not just the animal that everyone on Goodreads says he is. Uh, so the first one I wanted to mention is when he and Noah and Tiernan are in the truck, they're going to get some fast food in the drive-thru. And Noah starts laughing and it causes Tiernan to spill her coke. Well, Caleb ends up scooping her up and putting her in his lap and wiping her down. And she mentions as they're on their way home, as we drive home, all I'm aware of is him. Noah's not in the car. There's no music. Despite the breeze, the truck is hot inside. At some point, I look over at him and he raises his eyes, holding mine again. And I know then that I was wrong. I'm on his radar. And she's talking about how she didn't think that he cared, that she was just a piece of ass and he was attracted and that's it. But you're starting to see that it's a little bit more than that. And then the second one I wanted to talk about was it's later on in the story and they're all having dinner with each other and uh, Tiernan ends up giving up half her steak or something like that. or And then she didn't have any food. And so uh, Jake reminds her, he's like, you know, just you, there's no food until breakfast, just so you know. And she kind of just plays it off as, oh, whatever, even though deep down she's really, really hungry. Well, as she says that, Caleb has cut up half of his steak into little pieces and he just scoops it onto her plate and then slides it in front of her. And that was just another subtle gesture that kind of just melted my heart a little bit. Then you have the night of the threesome. Okay, so I do want to specify that Tiernan does not sleep with all three guys like at the same time. Basically, once she has this threesome, she's done sleeping with Jake. She doesn't sleep with him anymore. So Jake takes off to their other cabin to check on things and they're is this night where it, we're in Noah's POV and he's just lying there and he can hear Tiernan scream. Well, throughout the book, it's described how she always has these random nightmares at one o'clock in the morning, like clockwork every single night. So Noah goes to check it out. Well, as he's opening his door, Caleb comes down the stairs and Noah is watching him and he just goes straight to Tiernan's room. He climbs into bed with her and he pulls her up to him and she nuzzles into his neck and Noah is describing it like it's a routine. Like Caleb does this every single night and while this is happening there is a fire going on outside so obviously they get distracted with that they go outside Tiernan wakes up to save the animals and she gets cut really really badly and so 
Noah's trying to help her into the house and Noah just says like in his mind like he's describing it Caleb kind of just comes over and swoops Tiernan into his arms and then he nods at Noah to go clean up the rest of the mess while he goes and takes care of Tiernan and then they go in the house and then that is going to lead us into our threesome and I have to say it is in this threesome that it is very obvious that it is Caleb who is going to be the one. So they end up starting out in the kitchen. The guys are helping her clean up and Noah convinces her to give herself to them and just have a fun night. So as soon as she agrees to that, Caleb is the one who lifts her up and carries her upstairs. Well, from that moment, we are in Tiernan's POV and she is basically talking about how it is just her and Caleb. Um, she talks about how he's carrying her up the stairs, their eyes are locked, and uh, it's even described how they open the door and Noah just has to kind of scooch by them because the two of them are so locked into each other. Um, so they go in and Noah basically gets her first and then Caleb gets her second. And it's while she's with Caleb, she kind of whispers to him and she says, can we, can you and I do this again, please? I need this. And even after it's over, they all fall asleep, but it's Caleb that she's snuggled up with. And after that, obviously Jake comes back and you can just see the jealousy with Caleb. Like Caleb's had her once and that's it. Once he's had her, nobody else gets to have her. And I think that's some, like the part some people are missing. I don't know. I think people are just mad that it was Caleb that she ended up with. So they're not willing to see all the little things there. But I don't know. I just think be, with the character and the way Tiernan was described and how just closed off she was in the beginning of the story and not giving a rat's ass about anybody else, it just made sense that it was going to be Caleb that she ended up with. And so they have another intimate moment in the barn uh, where it's just the two of them and what. I loved about this chapter is that at this moment Tiernan is scared of Caleb she is so scared of him because she mentions that with him she feels everything and that he's the one that can really hurt her and so Caleb wants to kiss her and he wants to make eye contact with her and she is fighting him off saying no we can screw but you keep no kissing and it makes him angry obviously so then he starts angrily banging her it starts breaking and then they get into that moment and Noah starts shouting for her outside and she reaches this point in her mind where she says I can stop this right now and yell for Noah and he can come join us or break this up and instead she reaches up and she kisses Caleb and it surprises him. And at that point, she's just describing how this is it. No one else is going to be this good for her. Okay, so I am so sorry that I rambled on about a book that I've already rambled on about in another video, but you know what? Like I said, this is probably my absolute favorite book of the year. This might be my new favorite standalone romance. It used to be Punk 57, but you know what? This one, there's just something about it that's just different and it hits you. And that tension and that chemistry between Caleb and Tiernan was just like nothing I'd ever read. And Caleb and just his silentness, it's that extraness you need. But anyway, I will stop here and I will start talking about books that I haven't talked about yet, so... Until next time. Bye.